So, I've been playing Power Wash Simulator recently. It's, it's, it's not worth a review, it's kind of what it sounds like. But having played it for myself, one thing stood out to me. This game is incredibly polished, and that's probably why it's such an enjoyable experience. Ostensibly, Power Wash Simulator is a pixel hunt on a bunch of giant 3D models. Find every little pixel and hover over it with the mouse and then you're done. Right? But there's actually a lot of polish in this thing that works to its advantage, and if you're a technical artist, you owe it to yourself to play this game. But what do we mean when we say polish? Well, quick, go shoot a pallet in Left 4 Dead. Yeah, it breaks. But did it have to break? No, you don't normally need to shoot pallets in this game, but the fact that that's an option that they went through the trouble to build props that allow the pallet to break apart into little wooden chunks is kind of the backbone of polish. A game that doesn't include these is not automatically a bad game. It may have been the cost of a rushed development, development time just spent elsewhere, or even just an oversight, but the inclusion of polishing gestures demonstrates a lot of time and heart went into a production. Small details that were not just considered, but worked on and implemented. From something as small and insignificant as little incidental animations as Sonic getting covered in the Mega Mac and Mania, or the unnecessary verbs in Baba Is You, to entire phases of Cuphead bosses that require some strange tactics to unlock, these things are not necessary to make a game good, but they make the game better with their inclusion. But polish isn't just pointless little details, it's not separate from the design of a game, and it can be found in many places, from the audio of Breath of the Wild, to animating V1 tapping the screen on weapon vending machines and Ultra Kill, to the game mechanics and visuals of Power Wash Simulator. Power Wash Simulator is obviously a very narrowly focused game. You approach a surface, you spray it down, and you repeat the process until it's done. But you have multiple nozzles to use, and the sound of the water leaving the sprayer is different for each nozzle. The water also slicks off the surface in sheets, and you can even watch it dry in real time. These audio and visual cues make the water from the pressure washer feel very realistic, with the added bonus that it doesn't just instantly destroy dirt and grime. See, if I spray downrange, we can see that the actual grime washed away is reduced the further out we're aiming. We do a better job in the center of our shop, the further away that is, the narrower the center becomes. Sometimes there's a layer of rust or something under what we're spraying, so we have to go back over it a second time. This in turn plays into the mechanics of Power Wash Simulator. We can't just spray down a surface with the nozzle with the most coverage and expect results. Our work will be spotty or will actually not wash away a tougher stain or something like rust. That's why you use the tighter radius nozzles. They wash less of a surface, but they do so more completely. But to speed up a tedious wash, we can opt for the 15, 25, and 40 degree nozzles. Those offer a wider area of effect with reduced pressure, as evidenced by the sound of the water coming out of the pressure washer itself. It's not as bassy on the wider nozzles because there's less pressure. For most surfaces that hit too water pressure is actually worth it. Dirt and volcanic ash from the recent eruption in the game's lore don't need the full force to eradicate. But sometimes we do need that power, which is why they offer it. So what should be no more complicated than spraying down Serena Beach and Mario Sunshine becomes this slickly nuanced and solidly constructed experience. The actual dirt is built up in layers. You can spray down a top layer to reveal stuff underneath or just use a high power wash and just absolutely destroy all the layers at once. Between this, the animation of the wet surface itself, the particles from the water impact, it all comes together to create this supremely quality experience that's absolutely worth a look if you're interested in the, no pun intended, though appreciated, nitty gritty of art in game design. This is, I would argue, what makes Power Wash Simulator such a compelling game. It sounds nice, the water visuals are very fleshed out, and the mechanics of washing are more than just scrubbing the goop off of Mario Sunshine. It's not mechanically deep or rich, it lays its cards out on the table straight away, but the fact that this much effort went into the core of the experience is why people stuck around for more than an hour with this game, because they made the actual gameplay satisfying by marrying this audio and visual polish with the game mechanics. And while I greatly appreciate what Future Lab has done here, Guys, don't pressure wash your roof. That's how you break the hydrophobic seal, and that's how you get leaks. Come on, for being published by the Final Fantasy VII and Just Cause 3 guys, you'd expect a bit better. 
I don't know. I guess that must just be all the NFTs they're huffing over in Square Enix. Why'd they publish this game? I don't know. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Coffee and social media links are in the description.